In today's business world, service-oriented architecture has quickly become the standard method for supporting business goals and performance, managing change, increasing business agility, and optimizing business planning. Service-oriented architecture is a business-centric IT architectural approach that supports integrating your business as linked, repeatable business tasks or services. This demonstration will walk you through using SOA and Rational System Architect. In this demonstration, we will show you how to use Rational System Architect to discover how a business uses its services, how services are supported by IT and software applications, and how these things can affect business planning for the future. In this demonstration, you see how to use Rational System Architect to discover how business planning and direction, business processes, and IT applications and hardware are all interrelated using the service collaboration diagram. You also see the effect that change has on them. Note that this demonstration is performed with Rational System Architect version 11.3.1 and the SOA add-in installed. The System Architect SOA add-in provides a set of configuration files, images, matrices, and definitions that are loaded into your encyclopedia by selecting Application Landscape Tools Load Metamodel. You only need to do this once for an encyclopedia. The best practice is to do this when the encyclopedia is initially created. You must also ensure that Enterprise Architecture and BPMN Model Support is enabled in the encyclopedia's configuration for this encyclopedia before embarking on a SOA project. First, we examine our business's application landscape the architecture of software programs and services. Later, we will define business scenarios and execute them against our application landscape to gain insights into our application services architecture. First, let's examine the applications used by the UK operation by subdividing it into functional areas and analyzing it. Someone on the architecture team has already built this base application diagram, which represents the basic functional layout of the information technology function. The diagram contains component categories and service components. A component category is a high-level container used to categorize service components. Service components are a logical grouping of services organized, for example, by technology, platform, data used, and so on. Both service components and component categories should be discrete and distinct with no overlap between them in terms of functionality. Component categories and service components should rarely change unless there is a major business change so this template will remain fairly static. For example, over a five-year period, the service model at this level should not change significantly, if at all. Let's use this template to gain a better understanding of the UK region IT operations, based on other information already in the repository. First, we save the diagram template with a different name. Then, we will modify the template further to view the applications that provide and consume services for each service component. We select all of the service components for this application landscape and not the larger component categories. We select Build Landscape from Template. Select Applications arranged into components and the diagram is automatically updated to illustrate the applications that provide services to the service components that we selected. For instance, the Achilles application provides services to the item registration ser service component. A common business concern is decommissioned applications. Upgrading, replacing, or consolidating applications can lead to cost savings and improved operational efficiencies. Let's take a look at which applications provide services to components of our UK operation and discover which applications are due to be decommissioned. Analytics are definitions that contain adjustable specifications and can be run against single diagrams or encyclopedias as a whole. Each of these analytic definitions contains a specific report query that when run will perform calculations based on the algorithm attached to it. Let's discover which applications are due to be decommissioned before January 1st, 2012. The application symbols that are set to be decommissioned before January 1st, 2012 change to yellow. 
multiple applications across various business services, including auction workflow, payments and finance, and customer center management are affected. Let's take a look at applications due to be decommissioned before January 1, 2011. All of our applications assume the new color, so they are also due to be decommissioned before January 1, 2011. Let's search for applications due to be decommissioned a year earlier. The algorithm programmed into this particular analytic colors applications to be decommissioned before January 1, 2010, orange. Now let's examine applications due to be decommissioned before January 1, 2009. These are the most time-sensitive applications because they will be upgraded, consolidated, or replaced very soon. As you can see, the applications Poseidon and Wordplay are colored red, the color set up in the analytic specifications, indicating that these are critical applications to address. This is because they are scheduled to be decommissioned very soon, yet they still support services that the business depends on. The orange color indicates an important or hot area of concern. The red color indicates a critical or red hot area of concern. Such a diagram is referred to as a heat map. A heat map is a diagram that has had an analytic run against it to reveal information. The underlying code behind an analytic may be a report or a macro. Macros offer you more power and flexibility in discovering your enterprise architecture while reports are somewhat easier to create for users who may find programming macros too difficult or time-consuming. Let's take a look at how a macro analytic is built. Before creating a macro-based analytic, you must first create the macro in a program like Microsoft Visual Basic for applications. The macros used by analytics are stored in the Rational System Architect directory. Now let's take a look at the analytic itself. Here we find the VBA macro project that contains the analytic code, the VBA macro module that contains the analytic code, and the VBA function that contains the analytic code. After building the macro and creating an analytic definition type to run it, you can change the parameter values within the analytic definition type without having to alter the macro code. You can change the symbol type that the analytic is looking for, symbol type name, set here, to the physical application symbol type. Change the property that the analytic is looking at. Prop name is here set to decommission date. Change the decision type, the Boolean operator field, here set to less than. Change the date that the analytic is examining in the prop value field. Note 2009-0101 relates to year month date 2009 January 1st and the color that the analytic changes the symbol to, set here to 255, the RGB value for red. You have seen the specifications the decommission macro is looking for. Now let's discover where model object specifications are stored. We'll examine the specification set in the application bid server. Here you see the commission and decommission dates that can be used by macros such as our decommission analytic. This information may have been typed into this definition in Rational System Architect, or may have been imported from another record tool, such as the Configuration Management Database tool, IBM Tivoli. Minimizing the impact of unforeseen events, from the minor to the catastrophic, with the goal of responding more effectively to disruptions and minimizing the costs and time associated with the recovery, is important to all businesses. Applications critical to business operations often reside on one or more network servers and storage arrays. Without disaster recovery plans that ensure applications are protected from unforeseen events, applications and the services they provide are at serious risk. Now let's run some analytics against the application landscape diagram to better understand how the applications in the organization are prepared for disaster recovery. The application objects in this diagram all specify disaster recovery capability in the DR tab of each object's dialog box. First, we run an analytic that shows us those applications that are completely and regularly backed up, but simply haven't been successfully tested yet. These applications must be tested, but they are considered low risk currently.
Now let's discover applications with full disaster recovery that are also tested. Continuing on, we identify applications that contain no disaster recovery support at all, as well as those dangerously without disaster recovery information, also at risk, and those with only partial disaster recovery support. Now we know the exact level of disaster recovery of each application used in our UK operation and can act accordingly to protect critical business functions and services.